in my work on Australian magpies, one of the foremost songbirds in Australia, I noticed that they had many uh, alarm calls. And we discovered that some of these alarm calls were in fact not just generalized signals, but they were the start of a lexicon. Uh, we call that a referential signal, meaning is a particular signal that is given at a particular time means only one thing and every other member of the family or outside the family will understand that this means an eagle alarm call, for instance. And we decided uh, we are going to test this experimentally by recording their alarm calls first, a generic alarm call, for instance, and a mixed alarm call and one with an eagle alarm call. We put the sound source on the ground and eagles and eagle alarm calls usually generated viewing above because that's where the eagle would be circling. And we found that in fact magpies do respond to eagle alarm calls immediately and consistently by looking up. In other words, we discovered referential signaling in magpies. Now referential signaling in higher cognition have a very important place uh, in that uh, we think the beginning of lexicon also means that you have learned to communicate at a much higher and complex level. When the magpies viewed a source overhead, and remember the sound source was on the ground, they use their left eyes. So uh, that was the first exemplification of use of eyes and hemispheric specialization in the wild. Now birds have lateralized brains, which means that they process information differently on the left and right sides. It's also known as hemispheric specialization. And that used to be thought to be a function unique to humans. It was thought to be the kind of, give us our superiority in terms of language reflected in our right hand use. But now we know that a lot of vertebrates have lateralized brains, birds included. And we can show this very easily in birds simply by testing them, by putting a patch over one eye or the other eye. Because information from one eye is processed mostly by the other side of the brain. So for example, if we put a patch over the bird's left eye, and then give it a choice of grain and pebbles on the floor to peck at. The chick will peck at the grain and avoid pecking at the pebbles, provided it's using its right eye. However, if you test it with the right eye covered, it will just peck at random. So this is a function of the right eye and the left hemisphere. There are other things that the chick does well if it uses its left eye you put a patch over the right eye. For one thing is it will attack and copulate. It also responds to predators. Detect a predator much more readily if it's approaching on its left side than on its right side. Now this seems to be a bit of a paradox because it should be a disadvantage to react only to predators or more strongly to predators on the left side and to prey on the right side. You'd miss a meal on the left side or you'd miss a predator on your right side. Well, what we tested was giving the bird two things to do at once. Pecking at grain, finding it and avoiding pecking at pebbles, and at the same time presenting it with a model predator flying overhead, a model of a hawk flying overhead. And what the chick does, if it's lateralized, it can do both things together. It will learn to avoid pecking at the pebbles and it will look at the predator and decide it's not particularly interesting, it's, it's moving on, going away, continues to peck on the floor. So it knows the predator's there, but it continues to learn to find the grain. A chick that's not lateralized for those two particular functions has real trouble when it's asked to do two things at once. It first of all might miss seeing the predator, but then when it does see the predator, it 
doesn't go back to finding or being able to peck at the grain and pebbles. And by the way, it's being tested in this task using both eyes. So it could do it fine as long as the predator's not there. But give it two things to do at once. And it not only can't do two things at once, but it gets more and more confused and thrown off track. So next day when you check whether they can remember the difference between grain and pebbles, the lateralised one can remember fine, but the non-lateralised one can't remember at all. So clearly having a lateralised brain gives the advantage of being able to do more than one thing at a time which birds and of course other species too need to do all the time in the natural environment. But it doesn't explain why most individuals are lateralized in the same direction. Why do most birds use the left hemisphere for the same set of functions and vice versa for the right hemisphere? Why we don't know exactly how visual lateralization develops in most species, we do know that both genetic and environmental factors play a role in the development of this bias in birds. 99% of the embryos are positioned in the egg so that the right eye is close to the egg shell and the left eye is covered by the wing and the body. When the embryos are in, the, in this position, if the eggs are incubated in the dark, very few visual functions are lateralized. But if the eggs are incubated in light for two hours during the last three days before hatching, light penetrates the eggshell stimulating the right eye and the visual lateralization is stronger. Obviously, the development of this laterality of behaviors in birds must have evolved separately from mammals and it's certainly not a stepping stone on the path to human brain lateralization. Vertebrate species show strong lateralization that have evolved independently and different styles of brains have used different pathways within their nervous system to arrive at similar endpoints.